Hey everybody, Kate here at Pico Sports Center at Pico Mountain with Danielle, one of the fantastic um, employees here. I was going to say members because you look like a member. I mean, you look like you are very fit and you work out a lot. <laughs> How long have you worked here, Danielle? About four months. Great. Yes. How are you liking it? I love it. I love it a lot. <laughs> you look like you're beaming. Now, we were talking about some of the classes you guys have here. Pico Fitness Center is really awesome. I mean, it's one of the only places I know that has the olympic size pool and the fitness area and the aerobics um, room as well. But you also have a lot of classes going on. We have aqua classes, cardio strength classes, Zumba classes, spinning classes. Now, you're right next to the mountain. Um, I know there's a kind of a general misconception that people that are renting from Pico are the only ones that can come here. No, we have memberships for anybody that wants to come in, and even if you want to come in just for a day use, really? you can just come use the gym. Just a day pass? Just a day pass, if that's what you'd like. That's fantastic. Now, what are the kind of memberships that you guys have? We have one, three, six, and 12 months, okay. and we also have a punch pass that is seven visits. Oh. Good for one person, but it's good for seven visits, and it's good for a year. Wow, really? So you can leave, go out of town, and then come back and use it again, not having to make that full commitment. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Now tell me a little bit more about what you guys have here. I'm looking behind us and I see an Olympic sized pool. Yes. We have the lap pool and we have two hot tubs. Two. Two hot tubs. Not one, but two. And we have saunas in the men's and women's room in the locker rooms. Fantastic. And we have our weight room. So we have a variety of stuff here. Nice. And are all the employees as smiley as you? Because like you are so smiley. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. Come to Pico Sports Center just for the smiles. You love it. It's great. Now, um, a little bit more about guests that are staying in Pico in the condos. It's so convenient for them. They can just walk right over. It is. It's very convenient. And they have use of the facility as long as they rent through Killington. Really? That's fantastic. Rent through Killington, free use of the Pico facility. Definitely. Now, it's like a very family-oriented space, I've noticed. Um, do people usually come in with their families and spend a lot of time here? Yes, they do. They uh, Kids are in here all the time. We do a lot of birthday parties here. Birthday parties? Really? How does that work? You get a two-hour time slot, um, use of the pool, and you have the aerobics room where we set up some tables and chairs, and it's two-hour time period, and you can have 15 kids. Yes, it's great. How fantastic. So kids can come in and have their birthday and kind of stay fit, you know, stay in a really awesome area where they're promoting fitness and wellness, which is fantastic. I'm a big advocate for that. That's great. Well, Danielle, thank you so much. And we're going to have you guys uh, take care. You're watching Killing to TV. We are at Pico Fitness Center. Stay tuned for more. A Pico cut up with a good friend Tony Vagani, Coach Vagani, as I like to call him, along with Dash Riprock, two of the finest coaches here. We couldn't find Dash, he must be out about a cement pond. But anyhow, Tony, tell us tell us about the racing that's happening here today at Pico. Okay, uh, Slato, today's racing is um, the local high school race. All the high schools in the area are participating um, Rutland, Woodstock, um, all the high schools in the you know central Vermont area here. And, uh, we have about five or six races this year at Pico, um, and uh, it seems to be going good. A little bit cold, but, uh, you know, the, the athletes and the kids, you know, they can take the cold, not like us. <laughs> well, that's because we're old, but uh, I, I don't know. The cold doesn't bother me too much. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful day, actually, here at Pico. So um, part of your responsibilities are getting this thing organized, orchestrated, Correct. setting it up, and uh, breaking it down at the end of the day, right? Correct. Uh, we actually have the Pico Ski Club is... is really involved in the, all the high schools here uh, they do all the timing out of the uh, the tower up there and um, but they're you know we're working hand in hand with the ski club this year um, the resort and the, the club and the race programs are going like unbelievably this year um, me, you know the, the gears are meshing you know between uh, everybody and it's worked out very very great this year of course uh, Pico we can't mention enough celebrating their 75th anniversary, oh, yeah. founded by Brad Jana Mead, whose daughter, Andrea, one of the most famous skiers, uh, really, of all time. Uh, racing has a long and uh, proud history here at Pico Mountain. Correct. Uh, I can't wait for that uh, building to start breaking ground. I mean, uh, you know, start coming from the ground up. I, I watched it um, develop over, you know, from the beginning of October, you know, the, the whole excavating and everything, and it was pretty neat how they did it all. and the, um, and. You know, once it's completed, it's going to it's going to be from Pico Ski Club to the other building. It's going to be a complete deck, so uh, it's going to be great. You know, the, it's going to be 
everything um, that is was planned to be, it's going to be even better. You know, between the club and the Vermont Adaptive, and uh, it's going to make um, everything here just one more notch better. We're talking, of course, about the Intermediate Lawrence Lodge here, Pico for Vermont Adaptive. Tony, we got to wrap it up with you, but uh, hey, stay warm, brother, and good luck with the second run here today. All right, Slater, good seeing you guys, and think snow, guys. Well, Kate, it's time to wrap up our day here at Pica, but we had a lot of fun. We want to thank our guests today. We want to thank Aaron. We want to thank Tracy and Danielle for uh, spending a little time with us over here at Pico. I think you should get over here and spend some time at Pico as well. Absolutely, but this is not the only stop of the day. As far as the mountain goes, we still have to go over to Skyship and meet up with Bill Henny. And it's such a beautiful bluebird day. I don't think we should waste any time. Get over there right now. Hey everybody, we made it down to Skyship Base Lodge. As you can see, the beautiful gondolas in the background coming down this gorgeous mountain on this gorgeous day. We're gonna go inside though and catch up with our new friend, Bill, who has a lot to show us and a lot to tell us. That's right, it's our off the beaten track tour. Stay tuned, Bill and I are gonna talk Vermont ski history. Well, I've caught up with Bill, who is the manager down here at the Skyship Base on Route 4. And uh, we've come down here for a couple of reasons. One, to chat with Bill, of course, but we've got a new exhibit down here uh, on loan from the Vermont Ski Museum. But before we touch on these uh, beautiful items here, I just wanted to make mention what a great place this is to start your day at absolutely. Killington. Maybe you can tell us more about uh, what happens here and when, when you guys open in the morning. Well, absolutely. Uh, it depends on the time of the, you know, the week as far as when we open. Uh, weekends, it's uh, 8.30, the lifts start running, 9.30 midweek. Uh, we have a little bit of everything here from the ski shop, tickets, uh, lounge, uh, food courts. Uh, it's great for the locals. They just scoot right up from Woodstock or Rutland right off of Route 4 and makes it real easy. Yeah, parking is a breeze. You've got a very big, uh, large parking lot here, and even if that were filled up, a huge parking lot right across the street. Absolutely. You got a, a pedestrian bridge over route, busy Route 4, so no worries there. If you're bringing the family, you got kids, anybody, a uh, nice, safe entrance and exit here to the lodge. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I know a lot of friends who live out toward Woodstock and stuff, they always start their day right here. Right, very family friendly as well. Yeah. Well, you've got this new display here, again, on loan from uh, the Vermont Ski Museum. Um, Bill, point out some of these very interesting pieces. You got uh, quite a bit of skiing history, not just from Vermont, but uh, from around the country as well. You know, well, one of the things that Jonathan and I do is we, we're very much into the whole ski heritage and we like to present that to the people. And I feel it's very in right now. If you notice in Warren Miller films this year, uh, they added a lot of archival pieces and you know a lot of the antique equipment and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think they're finally catching up with the rest of us. Uh -huh. so, uh, this is a, um, on loan from the Vermont Ski Museum. I'm on the board of the museum. And uh, there's a couple interesting pieces. Uh, every year we have a Hall of Fame induction with the museum and we present plaques. And as you see over here, uh, of course, Press Smith, who started Killington, his plaque. Um, Donna Weinbreck over here, of course, our gold medalist. Uh, we have another piece that will be coming in from Phil Camp, who was the first marketing director here at Killington. Uh, and we have Karen Hooten, who is a renowned uh, freestyle skier that ha hailed here from Killington. Uh, this is an interesting piece. This is actually a scarf. Uh, this existed before uh, there was really organized ski racing, uh, before there was a U.S. ski team. It all started with uh, ski clubs. And if you look at the scarf closely, you'll see uh, different ski clubs from all over the country, the names on there. It's kind of an interesting piece. Yeah, some great history. What do we got over here? A couple of interesting pieces here. Uh, these are actually from uh, 1893. I believe this is the oldest piece of Jonathan Robinson's collection. Uh, Jonathan hails as the uh, second largest private ski periodical collection in the country. Uh, according to uh, John Fry, former editor-in-chief of Ski Magazine. Uh, this is an interesting piece here, uh, shot by John Jay, who was actually the uh, first pioneer of ski films before Warren Miller. That's a shot of uh, Tuckerman's Ravine. A uh, piece over here was interesting. We celebrated last week the new Tip Top Weekly. Uh, last week turned 100 years old. Of course, the illustrated graphics are about 120, 130 years old. 
You know the uh, the uh, ski boats in here from um, Tuckerman's Ravine. Uh, I know I've been there many times. I have have a lot of my friends, and uh, it looks the same today as it did in 1938 when that photograph was taken. And it's interesting to me here, my first trip to America by Hannes Schneider, yes. uh, a very famous Austrian uh, ski instructor who came over uh, before the war, of course. Um, my dad, who graduated from college in 1937, always talked about Hannes Schneider, and oh, nice. he was a real disciple of his skiing techniques. Nice. And uh, so it's it's very interesting to me to see that yeah. as well. We've got some pieces that are a little more interesting as far as uh, just art design. Saturday Evening Post, The Colliers, which is always great. New Yorker Magazine. Here we have Vanity Fair. Over in the corner we've got uh, Vogue. Uh, this is a piece I was telling you about here, the Far West Skier. If you look on the mailing label over here, it says John J. Films on it. That was kind of an interesting piece. This one we always find as a, as a fun piece. Yeah, this is a, you got to always have the Norman Rockwell piece. This was all based on the ski train that used to come up from New York City. As you can see, the guys are partying, and then you've got this gentleman who's on his way home from work and just saying, what are these guys doing? But the, the ski, ski trains were very popular in the early days here in skiing in Vermont. This was uh, Pepe, who is legendary here at Killington. Pepe Guggenberg. Yes. Yeah. This, this is a cover shot right here in Killington. I think it was between Catwalk and Cascade. Sure. And Pepe was in yesterday checking himself out on the wall. No so kidding. that was pretty neat. Oh. We're hoping to get him to come back and to autograph that, that cover. Uh, Pepe still skis uh, as good as that, if not even better. And uh, he's, uh, well... I would just say that he's uh, 40 uh, years older you know, now than he was then, but he, <laughs> and, he still I, can't keep up with them. That's what I hear. <laughs> I heard that this morning as well. Very so. good. All right. Again, Thanks, thank you so much, Bill. You're welcome. Thanks, All right. guys. Hey, everybody, down here at Skyship Base Lodge here at the Sky Bar with my man Slato. We actually just got to catch up with Bill, who gave us an amazing amount of information about all the lovely pieces down here that uh, we have donated from the Vermont Ski Museum. I think it's time to get a drink. Yeah, Bill not only is uh, the tour guide here uh, for the museum, but he also happens to be behind the bar on occasion. So we're going to wrap some hot chocolates. And uh, as we enjoy those, why don't you kick back? Because when you come back to rejoin us, Kate and I are going to have made our way up to the Lookout Tavern. It's up there on the Killington Road. It's the next stop on this tour. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it.